Hello and welcome to the Baron's Game Room. I'm Aaron as always, and it's time for another one of these. I don't know what it is about our game room, but it makes my cat exceptionally lovey, and it makes these videos kind of hard to make. Stop, that's my cat. Anyway, I've already spoken in the past about the Deckscape games. The Curse of the Sphinx is the one I have. Since then, I've gotten more. If you've been keeping up with the videos lately, you know I've been doing some screen cleaning and getting rid of some of my old games. And, well, Escape games are kind of the epitome of games that you only play once. It's sort of their whole thing. Now, one of my new purchases is another Deckscape game. I won't be saying much about that one because there's really not much to add that I didn't say in this one's video. So this video is mostly going to be about these two. I really feel like both of these games brought that whole escape room experience home in different ways. Starting with Clue, Treachery at Tudor Mansion. This one felt the most like I could pretty much see how this one would exist as a real escape room. Like last time, I'll do my best to show it off without revealing too much, but in this game, you actually have these tiles that are like rooms of the house that you'll end up revealing as you play that have these little numbers on them that those go to various cards you'll draw. And those cards will have the puzzles and puzzle pieces you kind of use to solve your way out of the locked house, very similar to this experience. So really the main difference with the clue from the deckscape experience is more just the presentation of having the actual room you're moving your pieces around. But the added part of it on top of there is you're actually solving a mystery as well, because this is clue. So while you are trying to find your way out of the mansion that locked down during a blackout, you are also trying to solve the mystery of who killed Mr. Body. So as you're solving puzzles, you are actually finding little clues that at the end of the game, you will have to make a final guess as to who the actual murderer was. Now, the next one I want to talk about is Neil Patrick Harris's Box One. Now, the Clue game felt the most like someone took an escape room and, like, put it in a box. This one feels more like they're actually just trying to bring the feel and experience of an escape room home. This one never felt like it was meant to be an escape room. This is wholly just a big puzzle mystery thing you're solving in a box. It's meant to be a home experience. Now there's no direct theme to box one other than Neil Patrick Harris has made this cool fun puzzle experience. One thing I like to say about this is that this box is just full of some weird quality stuff like good quality things. It's pretty neat. There's really not much I can say about this one without giving things away. You kind of just start off by opening this box and start going down this deck here. They'll give you various puzzles up to solve, and yeah, then the rest of it kind of comes into play from there. But this one is definitely, I think, the more interesting one of this group. Again, the quality of box one is great. There were some legit cool surprises while going through there. Again, I try my best not to say too much because I don't want you guys to miss out on some of the oh wow moments that we had while playing with this one. Although I will say, box one says it's an experience for one player, and it means it. I, I didn't, I, it's hard to say again without giving away how much it is a one player experience. Cause you know, generally when I see things as one player, I think, well, that's one or group of like cooperative, you know, what's the difference between one person playing the clue game or the deckscapes or a group other than you can all talk stuff out together. And it started out that way, but as it progressed, it eventually hit a point where me and my wife really couldn't do it together other than one person literally just looking over the other person's shoulder at what they're doing. So when it says it's meant for one, I think that's kind of right. I actually wouldn't recommend it as, you know, a group experience. You could try, but I wouldn't recommend it. I really don't know why I keep doing this to myself, making videos that are so hard to make when you're trying to talk about a thing that you can't really talk about, and you're trying to show off a thing that you can't really show off. Um, I'm, I guess I'm just a crazy person or stupid or something. But yeah, so similar to last time's feelings on all of it, I don't think my feelings on escape room games have changed much even with these two. I liked them back then, and I, I think I like them now. For the cost, even though you only get to play them once, I think the experience is always fun enough that I've felt fine getting them, especially since they are kind of a buy once and then sell off kind of thing. You can usually find these things on the secondhand market for pretty cheap. So even better. Maybe if you're thinking you won't be quite into them, don't go buy them new. But you've 
got plenty of options to pick them up from the people that did want to buy them new. So I still think they're worth your time checking out. I'd say, again, the Deckscape ones, they're some of the easiest, cheapest ones just to grab, bring, throw out on the table and start at it. The Clue one felt much more immersive. That one's much more of a you know, eye-catching thing. If your friends don't want to just look at some cards and move them around and go, oh, look, we solved the puzzle, go for Clue. Because Clue, again, is going to give you more of that escape room feeling at home that you have that actual table presence, you know, moving around the little board and stuff and things. And it feels a little more like you're actually doing it in a tabletop format. And box one, uh, well, again, that's the one I guess that's not really for groups, like I said the other one would be. It really does seem more like a one-person experience. But it was so unique. It was easily by far the most different home experience of these I've had. And the most, again, that is somehow the feel of an escape room while being very different because again all the other ones felt like they're trying to give you that idea of you're in this scenario and you have to run here run there look at this do that find your way out of this scenario you found you in meanwhile npa just showed up and he's like hey you like puzzles and trivia and stuff here's a box open it up and figure it out and it's like all right cool and again, I think it had some of the most, like, ooh, aha moments that the other ones didn't have just because of how physical it was. All the other ones are very dependent on the cards. And the box one, while starting that way, by the end, has pretty much thrown those things out the window. So if any of those sound cool to you, again, I think I said the same thing last time. You, I've already pretty much sold you or you already know you're not going to like it. If it sounds cool, you're probably right. You're probably going to love them. If it doesn't sound fun to you, then you're probably right. It's probably not for you. Anyway, either way, I think, <clears throat> just like last time, my verdict's gonna have to stay the same. These escape room at home experiences are still Baron approved.